How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. This is an RPG Maker MV tutorial on Failed's Item Price Control Plugin. This is a very simple plugin. Let's take a look at what it does. Have you ever wanted to make a game where item prices are different in different shops? What about a game that's similar to Sid Meier's Pirates? Or a game where you trade items from one place to another to make profit? With this plugin you can do that very simply. So let's take a look at this NPC. He's selling red berries and he's discounting his red berries because he grows them here. He's got plenty of them. So right here we can buy red berries for 40 and he also sells dry grain for 100 which would be a standard price. And we can take a look at this NPC and he sells grain for a discount since he has a ton of it. He's growing it himself but he doesn't have very many berries so he's selling the berries at the regular price. Now what you could do with these two NPCs is buy a bunch of grain from one guy and sell it to the next guy. Now this guy, he wants to buy the grain at a slightly higher price than what you paid for it. So you can buy berries for a discounted price, take those to a different shop who buys them for a slightly higher price than you paid. Buying low and selling high. Based on supply and demand and who's got what, you find the right NPCs to buy from the ones who have a surplus, sell to the ones who have a deficit. So we're going to sell the berries to the grain farmer for a slight increase and we're going to buy grain from him and we're gonna sell the grain to the berry merchant and buy berries from him. And we've effectively almost doubled our starting money of a thousand gold just by buying and selling. Now obviously in your game you're going to probably space these out quite a bit more from one town to the next town, have several different items. So this is an interesting little plugin. Let's take a look at how it works in the database. So taking a look at the plugin, we have some basic parameters. You can go ahead and left click and drag this little top part right here and that'll let you see everything that is described in here. So the first parameter, item sale price dependent on the shop price. Now this has two values. You can set it to the database. You can type in database here or you can put in shop value. Now the only, two, only difference between here is if you set it to database, it's going to use the value that you put inside the price right here. And if you put it to shop, it's going to use the value that you put in right here. But you can still set it to shop and use the database value if you set your merchandise to price to standard. So in general, I like to leave my plugin first setting to shop because that lets me use the database value or a custom value if I wanted to input that on the shop itself. So moving on to the next thing, item sale price multiplier. This is a default value. You sell things for half the price that you would normally buy them. If you would like to change this so that you sell things for like 75% of the price of what they're worth or 10% of what they're worth, you can simply multiply this by going 0.1 for 10%, 0 0.75 for 75%, etc. On the next parameter, sell price multiplier affects explicitly set prices. I set this to false. It's on false by default. However, you can change this to true. Since this plugin lets you specifically set the price of an item, even if the database is different, you can have this item price multipliers, these other plugin commands we're gonna use, affect only the things that you set the price itself for. I keep this off by default because I don't need this functionality, but it's there if you need it. The next thing is item buy price multiplier. It could be higher. Um, if all of your shops have their own discounts and then you set the price higher. Most of the time you're going to leave this to one. You can change it if you want. The next thing and final parameter of this plugin is buy price multiplier affects explicitly set prices. This is the same thing as the sell price but for buy price. So you can set explicit numbers to say this, this dragon sword is I want it to be 7,777 gold. The multipliers will only affect the items that you set the price to. I keep the value of this false and it's also set to false by default and you can pretty much leave your parameters as is. Let's take a look at how you actually use this plugin. We have uh, a brief description right here that I'll let you read if you want, make it shorthand for you so you don't have to read all that if you don't want to. If you want to set categories for um, your items, weapons, or armors, you can put this note tag on your items, weapons, or armors and then you can change the price multiplier of the price of all these category items at the same time. But keep in mind when you change the price of a category from one shop and you go to the next shop, you'll have to also set the other categories back. Let's take a case in point here. This is the berry bush guy and he sells berries for 60% off times 0.4. If he's selling in the database 
all the prices are set to 100. We have 100 for the grain and 100 for the berries. This guy, he sells berries at a discount. We're gonna set a plugin command. You go right click, you go to new, tab three, click down to plugin command. In the plugin command box, you type in the plugin commands that you see in the help file itself. Category buying multiplier. And then you type in the name of the category and then you type in the float value of the multiplier you want it to be. So if I want berries to be sold at 40% of their value, then I'll put in 0.4. You separate these by a space. You can see in the description note box of the item that I've specified red berries to be in the category for berry. So anytime I reference berry, it'll know any item that has this category note box. Now the reason why I have category buying multiplier grain 1.0 is because if I were to go over to this other guy and look at his, we're gonna change, adding a plugin command, we're going to change the value of grain to 40% of its value. So if I talk to this guy and then go back to the other NPC, both of them will be set to 40% of their value. So at the beginning, I set the category buying multiplier of berries to one back to normal, and they would be set as a discount if you talk to this other guy first. So you just kind of have to like set all of your values to one for all your categories and then make sure that if you're using this category buying multiplier or category selling multiplier, you want to set all of them when you change them from vendor to vendor. Let's take a look at some of the other things you can do with the plugin. You can use plugin command set sell price dependency, which is basically this plugin lets you change these parameter values with the plugin command at any time. So if you want to switch between a shop or database value, you can change this in game with plugin commands. That's pretty cool. All five of these are toggleable with plugin commands in here. This is another one you're probably going to be using more often. The next thing we're going to be looking at is buying multiplier and selling multiplier. These are going to be the ones you're going to use the most probably. Say like in Final Fantasy X, give that guy money early in the game and then he gives you discounts later on in the game. You might want to apply this to all of his shops. This is a very simple plugin command. Let's go ahead and copy paste this from here. You do the same thing. You would right click insert new plugin command and you put in your buying multiplier and a float value. We helped him out with something so he's going to give us 30% off his wares, 0.7. This is going to multiply the value of the item times 0.7, which is effectively making it 30% cheaper. He's gonna sell the same items at a different price. When we apply a buying multiplier on an NPC, we have to also apply the same thing to other NPCs. Once you put the plugin command here, it's going to affect all of the NPCs. Copy this, and we're gonna put this same thing over here, but we're gonna set it back to its original default value of one. So on our other NPCs, we're gonna make sure that they have a base value of one. Otherwise it will be 0.7 and then multiplied by 0.4, which will change your numbers quite a bit. And all of the NPCs will give you that discount that this guy gives you. You could make that if you want it to be that way. Most likely you don't want it to be that way. That's how you set it up. Buying multiplier, give the discount on that NPC. You set buying multiplier plugin for all your other NPCs back to its default value of one. Thanks for the help back there. All my items are sold at a discount. And now he sells berries and grain for 70 coins instead of 100 coins. Well, let's go see if it affects this price. Since we set the buying multiplier back to one, these prices are unaffected. So red berries are still 100 default, but grain is 40 because he's growing a bunch of grain. And this guy over here, he is selling berries at a discount because he's growing a bunch of berries, but grain is set to its original value. So that's pretty much it. That's the plugin in a nutshell. We can go over the last plugin commands. Um, like I said, they all are there to um, let you have the ability to control any of these values in game. And you can set explicit uh, sell prices on items by setting set buy price. Then you put in item weapon or armor, the ID number and the price and you can unset the buy price as well. I don't see why you would need to do this since you can do it in database, but you can use this extra functionality if you find a use for it. But that's gonna do it for this quick tutorial on Feld's item price control. This is a free to use with commercial projects. He just wants a shout out or you know let him know that you put it in games. That's all you gotta do, just put him in the credits. And you're free to use this plugin in your games even if you're selling it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you all my patrons at patreon.com. Please back me if you would like to support me. Bye guys.